The new Giant Tree of Life poster featuring every new Gala Pokemon is available now. Pick one up before Christmas as a gift to yourself or to a friend by using the link in the description and thank you for supporting the channel, as well as those of you supporting on Patreon, such as the Nerd Therapist. Thank you. Hello Pokemon Masters, Berkey Patobi here and thank you for clicking on this video. And the Gala Games are here and with them there are lots of Easter eggs and secrets, references of all kinds. I've got to admit, there's not as many references as there was say back in the days of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. There were a lot of Easter eggs and I imagine that's a case of taking an old game and then adding some more flair to it. But that doesn't mean that Pokemon Sword and Shield are without their deep lore and deep secrets. Everything from mistakes in the game to ghost girls, there is a lot to unpack here. So today I have 10 for you, but just quickly before I get started, with my 10 missable secrets, if you do leave a like and a comment on this video, you're still in with the chance of winning a, a copy of Pokemon Sword and Shield on the Switch and a, a console of the Switch Lite. I will be choosing the winner at the beginning of December, the 1st of December, I will make my announcement uh, on the channel. So good luck to you, there is still time, and of course if you leave a like and a comment on any of my videos with Sword and Shield in the title, including the Let's Play, which is now all up and available to watch, then yeah, every episode would count as a, as a new entry. So good luck here, enjoy the Let's Play, and don't forget while you're down there in the comments to click the link to check out the new Pokemon tree of evolutionary life. It's got every single new Pokemon on it, how they would evolve in the real world. I'll be doing a video all about that in the near future. Do check it out, because every poster sold uh, massively helps out the channel. With that being said, let's get on to 10 missable things in the world of Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. The hidden references from Easter Egg. So, number one, we'll start off with, with, I guess, quite a tame one. Number one, just outside the city of Surchester, which, by the way, is based on the real-world location of Bath. I have been there a lot. Of course, if you're up north, you say Bath instead of Bath, and, uh, and the Roman baths that you find there. Anyway, the city of Surchester, which has the most gorgeous music in the whole game, and a shop that sells this bag that, like, why is this a real bag? Anyway, these are not the hidden references or easter eggs, I'm just gushing about the game. No, just outside the city of Surchester is a man who says that people often swim from uh, the Gala region to Kalos. Blimey, that is pretty impressive and maybe a reference to where the world of Kalos is in the relation to Gala in the Pokemon world map that I worked on years ago. Except, hold up a second. Kalos is based off of France, uh, the Gala is based off of, of England, so of course it is a reference to the English Channel, which yes, some hardy swimmers have managed to tackle before. Of course, this is really interesting and kind of tells you that yeah, the Pokemon world is just now, actually, my map is totally wrong and actually is just kind of mapped on top of our world, except no. Because in the Kalos region, there is a swimmer who says that they've swam from Hoenn, which if that's based on its location in the real world, that would be Japan, and Japan to France has not happened. I don't know that, I'm not googling it, I'm just pretty sure. So thanks for the confusing lore game freak. Okay, next up on this list, number nine. So there's a point in the story where you meet Marnie, your new rival, and she's staying in the same hotel that you are getting ready for the gym challenge. Now, I didn't walk around or check out the hotel, so I don't actually know if this is playing in the right order, but what I did do is I did my whole adventure, and it turns out in the post game you can re-battle Marnie in her hometown of Spikeman. Which is awesome, and you know, that's where her character stays. Unless, however, you travel back to the hotel, and I assume if you haven't initiated this cutscene already, she's still staying in the hotel. You can walk into one of the rooms in the hotel and she's pulling faces with more Pico. Oh, I guess they're playing Peekaboo. I guess, more peekaboo. Eh, yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, she's pulling faces more with more Pico, but this was really weird to me because I had just seen her in Spike Mode. I'm assuming that this cutscene was meant to be played much earlier on in the game, but you can totally visit it in the post game, which, uh, I don't know, sounds like a little bit of a mistake to me. Unless, no, no, not unless. She's in Spike Muth. Next up, number eight. Yes, there is a ghost girl in Gala. So, in the Gala region, in the uh, city of Hammerlock, on the eastern side of the Hammerlock Pavilion, I don't know why I said the word pavilion there, I just wanted it to sound fancy. Anyway, on the eastern side of the city, there's a young girl who would like you to take an old faded letter uh, to a character over in the town where the fairy gym is. Bella, Bella Noma? I, the new names, I'm still getting used to them. Anyway, you take the letter to this old man, Frank, who asks how his friend was, and says that him and his friend, they used to be friends when they were younger, and then he moved away when he, she was young, and he misses her. He asks, how is my old friend? which really confuses you, the player character, because she was a little girl. And the letter is old and faded, and this is something he's clearly 
quite not quite got over. If you go back to visit the little girl, you realize she was never there. And if you click uh, click A on the spot where she was standing, you find the Reaper Cloth, an item used to evolve ghost type Pokemon. Little girl dead. The, the little girl, she dead. She died. What's even weirder is if you go back to Frank's house, there is a little kid in the corner of the house talking to the wall, and if you try and speak with her, she says, shh, stop it, you're trying to interrupt our conversation. Sorry, what? Number seven, this one's just a little Easter egg that you might have noticed very quickly. This is the new Gigantamax Gengar. Nice, new form as well as having had a Mega, that's, that's really wicked. Huh, this seems familiar to me. Oh wait. It's the Gengar building from Festival Plaza. It's basically the same thing. Pretty sure that's the inspiration. Or maybe it was a reference forward to Gigantamax. Anyway, it's the same thing. Didn't even have to look that one up. I just, I, I realized it and no one else has mentioned it yet. So there you go. Number six, speaking of weird buildings, Gigantamax Giralodon is in the house. For those of you who don't live in the UK, or even for those of you who do live in the UK, because apparently a trainer Liam didn't know this in his stream, Drolodon is not based off any old skyscraper. It's based off of the Shard, which for those of you who don't know, it's the tallest building in the UK. I think it's the tallest building in Europe. It is in every London skyline video that you've ever seen. Uh, yeah, this, and it's most recognizable by the fact it's kind of a triangular shape with the three kind of shard pieces at the top, which is exactly what's going on with Gigantamax Giralodon. It is an icon of London Landmark, and even if you don't think you've seen the Shard before, you've probably seen the Shard before. It's pretty famous. Uh, next one, although I'm gonna couple them together because I didn't come up with either of these. Uh, my friends Petey Winnell and uh, Kirsten came up with both of these. But uh, thank you for letting me use them in your video. There are kind of two little things here. Totally unrelated. Number one, back in Surchester, you know, the town with the gorgeous music that's based off a place I, I, I go to a lot. I really like that town. Anyway, in Surchester, in the shopping center, where there's the really cool bag that they should bring into real life. Okay, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. There is an, a Pikachu top and an Eevee top, but they're named incorrectly. They are named the wrong way around. The Pikachu top is named the Eevee top and the Eevee top is named the Pikachu top. And the second part of this, entirely unrelated, kind of another ghost girl situation. There is a lady in the gallery region who stares deeply into the flames of her two Litwick and says that it helps calm her down. She just seems very entranced by their flames. But the thing is, Litwick's Pokedex entry talks about how it, it burns a, a light that absorbs the life force of those that look into it. And that becomes the fuel that it burns, so yeah, another ghost girl. Number four, this is a, a kind of very missable thing. It is more to do with a Pokemon, so yeah, you, you might not consider this part of this list, although I did just do two, so, you know, roundabout ways, we still hit. And that is that Poltergeist has two different forms, and not a lot of people seem to know this yet. Both Sinisty and Poltergeist. It turns out that in the Gallery region, there are a lot of forgeries of the pot that Poltergeist likes to live in. As a result of that, there is a forgery form and a, uh, like, an actual authentic form. And I'm not quite sure what the determining factor is, is between which item you use to evolve a Sinistee into Poltergeist and which one is actually an authentic pot. I believe there is the chipped pot and the cracked pot, something along those lines, but the only way you can tell is on your Sinistee if it has the uh, mark of authentication underneath it. Without that, your Pokemon is a fraud, and that is a really cool hidden form to have. Number three, Morimoto and Game Freak. They are always in the games. You can always find the Game Freak staff somewhere, and they are upstairs in a hotel in Surchester. Surchester, by the way, has the best music in the game, and there's this bag in the shop there that they really need to make a real bag. Oh, I just... And also, have I mentioned that it's based off of Bath? I really like Surchester. Anyway, upstairs by talking to Game Freak staff, uh, this is where you're going to find the shiny charm once you have a complete Pokedex, and you get to battle Morimoto. I honestly love this little inclusion of an Easter egg into the game. I love that the staff are part of the Pokemon world. When is Bird Keeper Toby gonna be? I don't know, one day. Number two, and this one comes with a little Pokemon theory. Kabu is from Hoenn. There are only two places where you can find this information, either from a child who, who lives in the same city, uh, Motorstoke, who happens to mention that uh, uh, he was the shining star that came in from the Hoenn region. And of course, on his League card, you can find out that he came from the Hoenn region. And that's really interesting to me. Why would they mention that? Well, he's an old man and a fire expert. And there is actually a fire type expert, presumed fire type, who used to run the Laverage Town Gym in Hoenn. And that's in fact 
Flannery's grandfather. So the theory is, could they be the same character? Flannery's grandfather was not only a gym leader, I believe he was an Elite Four member at one time, and that's why Flannery has kind of confidence issues. He's, he's got a lot to live up to. And when you look at uh, Kabu's leak card, you learn a little bit about him and that he too, you know, he uh, has also had confidence issues and been knocked down from the major leagues to the minor leagues. But after good battles, he's kind of found his way back up. Kabu is, by the way, one of my favorite gym leaders. He really reminds me of the Sword Master um, and the Fire Master from Avatar The Last Airbender. Anyway, the point is, Kabu's from Hoenn. Is he Flannery's grandfather? I don't think there's enough evidence there, but maybe you want to make that Pokemon theory. Good luck to you. But I do find it super interesting. And number one, the appearance of Type Null in the game. Okay, this is something we should definitely be talking about, right? I mean, in the world of Alola, where Type Null appeared, there were only three in existence. One of them belongs to Gladion, one of them goes to the player character, and the other one, we don't know what happened to them. Just that there was a third Type Null. However, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, the only legendaries to appear in the game are Zacian, Zamazenta, Eternatus, and then Type Null and Silvalli, because yeah, they're legendary Pokemon. Why are they here? They're just given to you by a random trainer who is in the battle tower, and the Pokedex entry says that now new instances of this Pokemon exist, so clearly it has become a much more common Pokemon. But still, rare enough, you're given it as a gift. It doesn't exist in, like, the wild area for some reason. With that in mind, is Type Null still even a legendary Pokemon? I don't know. But the fact that it's here in Gala certainly had me thinking, oh, maybe this was in fact the third one. Just because there are new instances of the Pokemon doesn't mean that this one you're being given is a new instance of the Pokemon. Just then you've got to work out what the relationship is between the Aether Foundation and Macrocosmos who made the battles happen. But anyway, those are just my 10 kind of little missable things that are in the world of Pokemon Sword and Shield. If maybe you picked up on more while watching the Let's Play, then that's great. If you haven't checked out the Let's Play, obviously please do. Check out the link in the description. Play along. Maybe when you're playing the game, play along alongside me. It's my uh, first ever Let's Play, and it's probably the last one I'm going to do for a while. Also, I really am sorry for spamming inboxes. I'll stop talking about it now, but I'm very sorry. If you would like to check out the new Evolutionary Tree poster with every single new Pokemon on there, it is a work of absolute art. I love it. I love what has been done with it. Thank you a million to those of you who are supporting the channel by picking one up. I hope you're all having a, a good holiday season. Maybe get one for yourself or for Christmas. And with that being said, so high Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master.